Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments. And every now and again, I get people asking me questions about videos I post and they ask for slight modifications to the scenarios I've posted. And this is one of such examples. For those of you who follow my channel, you may have seen this data set before where I use it to get maybe the last non-blank cell or the first non-blank cell. So let me show you the modification to the problem here today. So just think of this data as you have, you know, products, you have, you know, delivery dates, and these are the quantities delivered on the different dates. Any day where there's no delivery, you know, that's blank. So what the particular user wanted to get is he wanted to get the delivery immediately following the last non-delivery. Let's make that make sense. Okay, so on these days here, there were no deliveries. There was also no delivery here, but this is the last time, I mean, within the data set, right, where there was no delivery. So the cell after that, you know, that's what he wants returned. So pretty much this 19 here. In this case, this is the last time there was no delivery. So he wants this cell here. So that's 40. Okay, and here, there were no deliveries here. There was no delivery here. So here. Okay, so the way I've couched it is first delivery after last non-delivery. The other way you could think about it is the first non-blank cell after the last blank cell. So first non-blank after the last blank. So the exercise will be first of all to be able to get, you know, what's the last blank cell. Then once you have that, you just step, you know, to the right by one. Because once you're here, you step to the right by one, right? Once you are here, you step to the right by one and you have what you want. Okay, so the easiest way to do this, once I think first and last, I think x lookup straight away or i think the x functions x lookup x match but let's start with the x lookup because x lookup can return the first and last instances of things right so i can say okay let's do x lookup i may just modify it slightly and say okay look for a true right where in my lookup array what i'm testing is i'm testing if this is blank okay so if this is blank you know obviously this will give me you know true false right okay so this is now uh, that was quick yeah, so you can see this true here, that's what I'm interested in. Okay, all these trues are blanks, but this true is what I'm interested in, the last one. Okay, so that's my lookup array. Then in terms of my return array, just return for me, you know, the cells themselves. Let's leave the if not found for now. The most important argument here is the search mode. To say that you want to search from last to first, not first to last. So here, instead of using one, you'll be using minus one. Okay, so minus one will give you what you want. But now you see a zero, which technically is the blanks you are seeing here. But how do you know that you are returning the right thing? Well, easiest way is to use the cell function and then the address property of it. So let's use a cell function and then let's do address. So what you are saying is that give me the cell address of this value that you know Excel has returned using the XLOOKUP function. It says h5 let's take this down slightly let's just see so this is this cell h5 yeah that's correct so that's good c6 that should be this cell that's c6 right this is i7 which is this cell i7 so yeah our formula works you know pretty well okay so x lookup has returned for us you know this last cell here that is blank okay and well without sounding like a broken record you can see that x lookup actually doesn't return a value returns a range or a reference which is the reason why that cell address you know can return you know the address of you know whatever the x lookup produced if x lookup just produces the value cell address of that will not make any sense so now that we have this what do we do we simply just use an offset function the forbidden function somebody will ask me victor why do you call it that <laughs> because that's what people call it so just say offset because once you get the position of you know that last uh, blank cell you just want to step by one right so i can say offset by no rows one column okay good and then you know we have the answer so everything looks fine you take that down everything is fine now we take it to the last one and i left the last purpose there for a reason and once i paste in there you know i get a circular reference error and i'm like but this is the same formula i've pasted across the other cells you know what's really going on here okay and i do okay but it leaves it in there you know and that's not the answer if you look at the data here you see that there's something different in this row compared to the others which is what the fact that the last cell within that range is actually blank so if this cell is blank and you use an offset an offset is supposed to come you know one step right in that sense then it means that offset is actually returning the value in this cell. But this is the cell where you're putting in your formula and the offset is also referencing, you know, it. And that's where the circular reference error comes in. Of course, the easiest way will probably be, you know, to insert a blank, um, you know, column in here, right? Insert a blank column and in your range, you make sure you are stopping here. So with that blank, 
you know, your offsets, you know, will never uh, reference the same cell where the formula is and you won't have a circular reference. But that doesn't seem like the most elegant way to me, at least. You know, elegance is relative. It depends on who is, <laughs> you know, who is doing it. Okay, so now let me show you what I would do. I'll just do something very simple. So I'll, I'll take out, uh, let's just, yeah, let's just take out the XLOOKUP bit of it, you know. Okay, so let's just use the XLOOKUP bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a let function here. Okay. And I say let, you know, result be that. So result is, you know, everything XLOOKUP. Then simply, I just do an if function, right? And I'm just testing this result here. I want to compare this result to, you know, the last cell in there. Okay, so in the case where you know they are the same, because I know X lookup obviously you know is returning zero or blank. So in the case where these two are the same, it means that you know that cell is actually blank. The last cell is blank. So wherever the last cell is blank, you know I don't want it to return a value. I want it to just return blank. Okay, so meaning that it can't find. There's no um, you know non-zero or non-blank value after it. So I don't want it to return anything. Just return blank. But in the case where that's not, you know, the case, it's now where I do the offset. So I'll say offset, you know, result, no rows by one column. It's just basically the same thing. Okay, close that and then close. Okay, so let's see if this solves the problem. Okay, so good. So you can see that here now is blank. If I make this blank as well, you know, okay, then, you know, that disappears. So that's kind of, you know, pretty much you know how i would solve it with that the other option you know would be to use like the x match you know function okay so and that's also very similar um so what i could do here is i could do you know x match and then for my lookup value i just skip that and say oh, okay look up array yeah look up here and then for the match mode no then go to search mode the same thing i do you know search last to first this will tell me the position that, oh, this is in position 7. It's just like what the match function would do. But just that the match doesn't have the argument to search from, you know, end, you know, to beginning. Okay? So, this is telling me, oh, yes, this is the 7th cell there. So, if you start from here, this is 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 7. Okay? So, good. So, now that you know that you are in 7, what you now need is you need the 8. Right? So, it means that from this range here, if you select and select the eight column in there you have what you want so what i can do now is i can just do here and i can do choose calls i can say choose calls from here which is you know choose the column and then whatever the x match returns which is kind of more like an index match you know do this okay so now this would work for the last one you'll see that it gives you an error which is fine at least since we now have an error then you know it's easier you know to fix this so you could maybe decide to just use you know like an if error in this case and say okay if it's an error you know just give me nothing okay and you can take this down right and that kind of settles it so if you delete this value too you know and so that's how you know i would approach it maybe the last thing i'll just do is now i'm having the formula sitting you know i mean in all the cells i want it to spill because what's the whole point of having a dynamic array if the formula doesn't spill so let's see if we can you know flip this you know in a way you know to have it in one cell and have that formula go all the way down for this particular one it's easy i can just do it by row what i'm saying is that i want you to perform this calculation row by row i select everything here you know the entire range but when excel you know evaluates whatever it is i'm giving it it's going to do it row by row because i said use the by row function that's what the function is designed to do then i do lambda in here and i give it a variable so the variable here which i've called x x represents every row at every point in time so it means that in the first step of you know the iteration x will represent this row you know which is like saying b5 to k5 the next time it will represent b6 to k6 next time b7 to k7 so that's what it is so everywhere i have b5 to k5 that's the row i'm really referring to so i can just call it x because x now replaces that so i do x here okay so now i need to close that's the lambda and then the by row we'll have a spill error just because of the data here and then we can delete this right and we now have one formula that gives us exactly the same thing which is what we could also have done you know here even with the um you know x lookup it's basically just changing this b5 to k5 to you know whatever variable you are using in your by row so that's how you know to get it done so just something i thought to show a good question asked and 
well, good solution and there are many ways to solving it. But these are the two I decided to demonstrate. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel. Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.